Let's talk about drama, shall we? Let's have some drama wars, because yes. it's been a hell of a week, the previous week, for drama. Podcast of gossip today. What's up, Drama Alert Nation? <laughs> oh, we've got Keemstar on the payroll. Yeah. This is a weird one. It's one of those. I, I was having sandwiches a while back with Tommy Robinson. <laughs> and um, <laughs> What a way to introduce a story. We were, we were reminiscing about this. This is on screen now. This is the Day for Freedom, which was an event that he held in London, which was basically just a stab in the dark. He decided to set up a uh, rally in the centre of London next to Parliament on the basis of, okay, let's, let's get some goodwill and, and some connections going, and then something will grow out of this. And it didn't really work. It was a great day. It was a good, good uh, attempt, and it failed. Because what happened to the people who were involved? And, well, everyone kind of got persecuted or banned or, or, well, dealt with by the state. I mean, TR himself, he now runs a podcast on Rumble because he's banned on YouTube, etc. That's, that's where he is. Right, Lauren Southern, she was there, or at least tried to before she was banned by the state. Uh, she now has to live in constant fear of the security services. This is her most recent video talking about this on her channel. I haven't seen that yet. Is What did she say? Well, she made friends with these two people called Brittany and Martin Zellner, and they got married and started Generation Identity in Germany. And you can criticize them or have worries about them. And that's, you know, fine, that's opinion. But what happened to Lauren for being friends with them is that she would get detained every time she left the country and went to any other country in the Western world, and would be questioned for hours about whether or not she'd spoken to these people. And if she'd even spoken about their babies, nothing political, then she would be detained further and they check her phone. Their babies? What? Yes, so uh, Brittany, for example, has babies. Lauren has babies. So they're women talking about babies. And for this crime, this would still put her on the uh, person of interest list. And she ended up getting banned from Australia, for Christ's sake, where her own children and family were. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty horrible what's happened to her. Actually. She got persecuted by the state, not just one of them, all of them in the West. Weird. Oh, they all seem to have the same apparatus. Um, Milo, he he um he, he's doing weird stuff. <laughs> I like that Chiron there. <laughs> <laughs> this this is where he went off to. Uh, he's now, as uh, this Chiron says, reformed sodomite. <laughs> Their words, not mine. <laughs> but that's that. Um, Dankula, what happened to him? Well, he's he's up in Scotland making funny videos. He's he's doing his thing. Exiled in Scotland. Yeah, pretty much. But, you know, what political power do these people have in, in totality? And it's, it, it didn't really manifest in that way because the British state, at least, is, is completely controlled. There's no real ability to do those things. And there was lots of drama throughout. There were plenty of other names. People might remember um, uh, Lucy Brown. People might remember Caelan Robinson. You know, if you don't, that's fine. This is just drama of the time, right? And uh, Carl set this up, and we, ha we have this. But the point being that uh, nothing really remained intact and British writers are really quite rare. I mean, they're sort of like uh, the Enclave. They're... There's a, a sizable number of them in this building at the minute. But that's the point. They're like the Enclave. They, they're in like certain locations, <laughs> or they're just remnants throughout you the wasteland. From Fallout, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course. But um, that's that. That's something I was reminiscing with the bad man about. And then I saw over the week um, the drama, which is the Yankees have all been fighting each other. And uh, I don't know if you can zoom in on this, Jack, real quick. But uh, this is just an insight to the kind of crappy memes I make to entertain myself. And it's <laughs> the Daily Wire had a week of stepping on rakes for weird reasons. And in case you don't know what any of this is about, the first one there being Matt Walsh, who decided to come out and say that even though I hate video games, I'm going to defend video games from such and such. That wasn't taken kindly. People didn't seem to like that. That was, that was weird. Um, Candace Owens then had a big public spat with the Daily Wire over a year for Israel and other stuff. Yeah, Crisis King. Yeah. And she's now left. <laughs> As you can see there, uh, you, you hinted at through there. Um, oh, well, sorry. Ben Shapiro re Foreshadowing. refuses to say as to why he's uh, parted ways with her at all, or the reason why. That's very Soviet of him. Uh, well, it's you know, his decision, but that's, that's drama. That's a lot of drama, quite a <laughs> he bit. He chose to leave the Daily Wire union. The, the Rabbi Shmuley thing? In case you wonder what the hell this is about. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> a, a rabbi that Candace Owens got in a big fight with, and presumably that's some of the reason why she left. Oh. I'm sure Harry will go into it in more detail on Friday. I'm not going to. The point being, it is weird. This is all weird. This is all weird stuff. I haven't stuff. seen this picture before. I heard about it, but I didn't actually see it. That's um, Yeah, this, this fella is a, a, a very off-the-wall rabbi. Uh, very, very really? strange. No, no way. <laughs> I never would have guessed. Thanks and, for clarifying. And him and Candace had a big fight um, in, just before she was fired for some reason. Anyway, that moving on. real nose? That looks quite convincing. I think this is a stupid face mask he's got on. But anyway... <laughs> Moving on. So we also have the Christ is King drama that, that, that happened. And this is Andrew Clavin saying that saying the phrase Christ is King is an anti-Semitic dog whistle. And then the Jews are... I think Christ literally means King. 
Mm-hmm. That's like, what it means. It's it's really weird. Yeah. I, the, the real thing about this is I'm looking at all this from a British perspective, and those are the you know a lot of drama goes on in these circles. These big people in political commentatory positions. I don't know, I don't know what I, I don't know how to describe this. And uh, this happened in Britain, and what ended up happening is everyone just kind of dissipated. And like I say, it's now the enclave. I'm watching the Americans go through something similar. I mean, there's been a fair bit. I mean, the Daily Wire is not not unusual to drama. You know, someone makes a take that a lot of people think is shit, and uh, there's a fight about it. That's pretty normal. That's bad. That's a bad day. But the last significant one was Crowder, wasn't it? Yeah, in which they offered Crowder a contract. Crowder basically told them, "You're the devil," and then they had an argument about it publicly about it. And I don't want to get into all the specifics of these little dramas. I mean, you, plenty of people will be doing that. Keemstar, enter stage. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store. Uh, these won't be in the store forever, so if you do want them, go and get them now. Thanks very much. And I, I think the right wing now is do it, doing a Monty Python, you know, people's front of Judea, mm-hmm. Judean front of people. I'm not it, sure. They are talking so much about things and they, there is so much discourse that all everyone is trying to create their own position and <laughs> they are not playing along each other. Unless you don't agree with me 100%, Stelios, you're my enemy. Yeah, you're a Maoist. I'm not sure it's it's so much that as, as just making um, pointless ventures. Yeah, I mean, like Matt Walsh, for example, I, 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 I get that he's trying to do the whole, okay, even if I don't like video games, you guys don't deserve to be infected with woke nonsense, so I'm going to say something. That's the steel man of his position. But if you'd already made the public position of, I hate video games and they're for losers, it's not really a worthwhile venture to get yourself involved in that. You know, the, the quartering everyone else, they're doing their thing. That's their circle. That's their obsession. Just let them be. Ironically enough, Andrew Claven was the one that pushed back against Matt Walsh and said, actually, I like video games and they're good. They're fantastic. Yeah, they are. They're he talked much about better them. than watching TV. That's for damn sure. Yeah, he talked about The Last of Us specifically and made a fantastic argument for why The Last of Us won, not two. Is, <laughs> is, is I very, think everyone knew what you meant. Is very, very good because it's, uh, it's also just a story about a dad relearning to love. But there's that. But it, again, just kind of like why? Of all, of all the things you've got today, could you not make um, migrants breaking into the country illegally episode 3000? Like, could you do that instead? <laughs> I know that's sort of my wheelhouse, but there we are. Now, this Christ is King thing, for example. I mean, I saw James Lindsay making this argument that, well, no, 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 no. Uh, this, this is definitely the case. That it's anti-Semitic because it's very, very new. I proved it with... It's new, therefore anti-Semitic. Yeah, I proved it with Google Trends that this is an op. And then there's people like... All this academia here. Yeah, then there's people like Don the Pleb being like, okay, same source, Google Trends. It's been around since 2004. I, it, what are you talking about? This isn't some brand new saying. I saw it long before the Israel-Palestine stuff. You know, it, it's something that people say. Yeah, I mean, this just very much reminds me of the Pepe the Frog drama. They were like, don't you know Pepe represents the clan? I was like, also, no. If, if the Daily Wire had any sense, they would be aware of the Streisand effects. More people now are aware of the phrase Christ is King than before. And, you know, it makes me want to say it by, be, you know, people saying, you can't say this thing. So I'm just like, I'm going to do it. Well, Christ is King. But, that, but, that, but that's the thing. It, it's, it depends on context, you could argue. You know, my, if I'm using Pepe to talk about my tendies, or if I'm using Pepe to talk about exterminating such and such, <laughs> it's not the Pepe. It's, it's the way I'm using, whatever. I mean, this is you all logical that, stuff. You use that spanner there. There we are. My, um, my if you use that to fix a car, yep. no one would have any problem. If you used it to bludgeon my head in, someone might have a problem. You wouldn't put the spanner on trial, though, would you? I, I could try. Uh, it's got a please, word. please don't try and budge my head in. Um, but my point being, okay, a lot of drama, okay, this is just, just annoying. Uh, but if the, uh, it, the reason I say drama wars is because Daily Wire may have had a, a week of stepping on rakes. Um, they're not the only ones. Uh, time for more rakes. This time, because of course there's not enough drama, uh, Jared, not gay Jared from Crowder, is, is, is going to have some drama. It's time for him. Uh, you don't know what this is about. This is the guy who used to work for Crowder. I love how these two, you know, Crowder and Daily Wire had a spat. Now they're both having their own spats. <laughs> there's, there's some kissing later on. I'll, I'll, yeah. Can you just spat all, all of, the way uh, down? This is Callum's like deaf friendly podcast today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is for all you deaf people that say we, we don't include commentary for you. Here's Callum demonstrating politics to you. I gave a you a spat between water and dick. Who's who's who? 
Um, that's Crowder. That's <laughs> all right. Whatever. I'm gonna stop doing that. <laughs> Interesting hand movement for Crowder. You say Crowder, and all of a sudden you start going like that. That wasn't purposeful. <laughs> but the point being, okay, here's some more drama to throw on the bonfire because why not? Um, this is that apparently Crowder, according to Jared here, is quite abusive, and the way he's abusive is that he takes unnecessary legal actions against his former employees, and this is legal harassment. Is his argument? Um, this this is pretty weird. I mean, you can see everyone jumped on this. Cernovich is like, okay, Crowder's suing an ex-employee for applying for a job. It seems... That is, yeah, bad. A, a nasty move. That's, that's the case from the Jared side. Um, you've got more people saying that, okay, well, I know about this. This is a long-running problem with former employees of, of Crowder. So there we are. That's, that's that. And then you've got his former wife loving that he's put this out and saying, yep, that's a big problem. And you may remember, of course... Um, who can I use for his... No, that's Ooh, rude. Add, twisting the knife and saying a great father and a loyal husband. Okay. And, and, and saying that about someone who's accusing your ex-husband. Right. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to use for a wife. <laughs> it's all I've got to hand. You, you could have at because... least gone for the one that had tits on it. All right, fine. Start. All right, there we go. Pecker is, is, is... Welcome to my very professional show. <laughs> <laughs> Can right. show and tell everyone. They were fighting um, because the wife um, d didn't like the marriage, and there were problems, and, and whatever. <laughs> point being, point being, Great demonstration. <laughs> they broke up. There's big drama between them. You may remember some footage coming out in which she was arguing or showing this footage to show that uh, Crowder was saying she's not performing her wifely duties by getting food for the dog when she was heavily pregnant. And th I don't care. I don't care about any of this. I don't care about the, the minor obligations to the dog. But this is all such like personal stuff between the person involved, the person who's doing something or not doing something, and their family and, and their conditions at work and whatnot. I, I just kind of find it weird that all of this has to be so public and a bitch fight. So I, <clears throat> this may end up destroying these two institutions. It's all about clicks and views. You'd think, but if this was just about clicks, that's sort of, I don't know, what would I say? Uh, the crowd of fight. I mean, everyone contract. loves a gossip. Even if they say uh, not, I mean, listen. but it's not—it's not that. Because if we're dealing with the the fight between Crowder and Daily Wire on contract, right? That yeah. was a bit. That was clicks. I'd agree. But them saying no, he's an abusive person on legal basis. I mean, it, it, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I wasn't trying okay, to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, no. Okay, but I, I think it's a bit more serious. Is, is all I'm trying to get at. Um, the, the other thing that's funny about this is that Steve, uh, not Steve, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. <laughs> you just anglified Ben Shapiro there. Uh, Steve entered the chat. Um, <laughs> he's decided to retweet this and also donate 500 buckaroos to the Jared fella. Steve Smith there, being spiteful to Stephen Crowder. Yeah, but there's actually like a proper bitch fight going on between the two. And <laughs> God, I love props. By proxy, it's like, uh, you know, Russia, Ukraine in the West. Via Jared. Yeah. Uh, in case you want confirmation as well, I did see some people like the quartering says it's not true. Ben says no, no. Call himself Benjamin. I, I did it. I, uh, I did give $500. I'll do it again. <laughs> but um, also, Candace Owens agrees with the Crowder position, well, the hate Crowder position, which is that this is awful and Crowder's a bad man. So there's that. And uh, Crowder's team have put out a statement saying, well, today at 10 a.m. Eastern time, they're going to do a response. So I don't know. What, what's, 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 what, what's the whole point in this? Why am I bringing this up? Because good Lord, if this happens to the United States in the same way it happened to the UK, which is everyone just becomes the enclave and this whole movement of, well, not movement, but more structures just collapse, that would leave everyone worse off. And for what? Because you, you can't get your shit together. Petty and fighting over the, the scraps, basically, isn't it? It's ultimately what it amounts to. But like work conditions. It's financial and, and working yeah. conditions and things like that. Working conditions is fair enough. And, and you know, people at least need enough to make ends meet. If they're very well off and they're fighting over stuff, then you call in question. Don't you? I think there is also another element here that is important is that so when people are commenting constantly on uh, how to address the moral crisis, it uh, may be entirely, you know, how should they say, challenging for other people around them who think that uh, they are completely assholes to them. To they, they, they may think that this is really bad and they come out and talk. Well, they say this person who is actually posing as a moral authority who is going to address the whole nation about how to live 
is an actually really good person. So there's a lot of insincerity on yeah. all sides of the political spectrum, unfortunately. Yeah. And I, I think that, that a very unfortunate thing about a lot of political commentators more generally in, in the modern day is that it's more about signaling that you're the epitome of the group membership that you belong to, be it sort of conservative or progressive. And, and lots of people do this to some extent. I think it is an aspect of human nature, but it's a shame that it's taking over almost that all commentary seems to translate through this prism rather than you, you don't get too many people telling their audience difficult truths anymore. And I think it's part of the reason um, is that being able to make this sort of thing work financially is more difficult than it used to be because of the, the cancellations and things like that. And so people are a lot more sensitive to the, the wants and needs of their group. I don't know how much I, I can really say on this, so like good advice. I mean, just some guy with a laptop. But one thing I will say that's definitely true, which is uh, you don't have to have an opinion on everything. This seems to be a lot of these pitfalls. I mean, why do you have to sit there and talk exactly. about video games if you don't care about them or yeah. start arguing about Christ is King? I mean, where did you think that was going exactly? That was just going to cause a fight for no reason. I mean, I never really talk about religion because I don't know much about it and I leave it to other people that are more qualified. But it would also just kind of be pointless to start a fight for no reason with the religious. I mean, of all the people threatening well, yeah, your I'm... way of life. <laughs> That's just <laughs> How dare you principled people who care about their family, community and their soul? It's just not a thing in the West. I mean, no, so... of course not. Uh, to get to this, I mean, I saw Sidney Watson having a bitch fight with Pearl Davis. Ooh, more drama. But this was all about the fact that um, Jared and Crowder are having their fight. And then Pearl chimes in with her opinion based on one tweet. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I just it, it, when, you, when you've got nothing to add, it's probably, or you don't know, probably best to just be like, I don't care. I'm just not getting involved in this stuff. But anyway, um, a lot of this seems to be caused by people not being able to be fully professional, perhaps. On, on whichever side I don't know don't really care to get into all your petty dramas so um, good luck to all of you lovely people out there making stuff but uh, yeah this is a bit worrying for me on the sense that <laughs> I feel like these people might actually end up killing some institutions by just making fights over things that didn't need to happen you seem so much more threatening when you're saying this with a span of hands <laughs> sort yourselves out but, come round <laughs> I'll undo your knobs <laughs> you're absolutely correct though when you say that not everyone has to comment on everything Mm. It's a good, good rule. Yeah. So, I mean, I think one of the interesting things that have that have uh, happened with uh, you know the alternative media platforms is that for too long, people in mainstream outlets had to say one plus one equals two, and they didn't, and they allowed people who said one plus one equals three. So that leads to constant discrediting. That uh, gives people a huge audience. Those who actually said no, one plus one equals two. We're not going to allow you to say three. But uh, it also gives them the opportunity to just comment on ev anything. And that's not, uh, that's not very good. I just don't think it's worth your time. I mean, you end up getting involved in a billion fights forever, which, I mean, unless you're actually Keemstar. I mean, that's the point of drama alert, is to run into these fights and, and gin up you know, controversy so there's clicks. Okay, fine. But you don't want to do that if you're actually trying to build something of worth. So I just uh, some advice to people is, is is don't don't waste your time on things you don't need to. I don't think I'd, any of us like, have ever got into spats with anyone really. But, but it's a proper rule we have. It's sort of unspoken, but I've noticed it. We, we just if we can, we try not to engage in such. Just be nice to people. It's, it's but also nice. just don't do stupid, retarded takes for no reason that you know would cause a fight. Oh, I can't help that. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, I think we you know we've got our problems, but they're not. Not as, as, as drama causing as recent events is all I'm getting at. But anyway, um, if you want to feel better about the state of right wing drama, uh, you can always check in with left wing drama because that, that's on another level. <laughs> we can see here. Oh, wow. I can't say much <laughs> this about this. already escalated. <laughs> without getting sued. But here's a nice 9 11 meme. Uh, Abigail Thorne, Philosophy Tube, finally allowed to say this. I'm in Star Wars. Uh, this show drops in June. And then out of nowhere, ContraPoints decided to tweet Look, I get the pain of being a trans woman who realizes that her boyfriend wants to be her. I really do. But on the bright side, at least your ex didn't also ditto your entire YouTube career. That would be so awkward, haha. -ha. Did you say they're particularly litigious? I am not saying anything more than what is on the screen, because that is what is publicly available. All right, I'm going to follow your lead then. <laughs> All right. So what happened is that ContraPoints deleted that, and uh, most people believe it in reference to Philosophy Tube, because uh, a lot of people have been digging up evidence such as Carl and then, and then presenting it Purely as what is online, nothing more. 
as you can see here, Philosophy Tube had an opinion that they didn't have dendrodysphoria, never did, and then all of a sudden uh, they did uh, after engaging with Contra, and also has a very similar style. <clears throat> so there's that. Matching, maxing, even. I didn't even. I said it like Sean Connery then. Trans matching. My whole point of this, just to be like, my God, left wing drama is a whole other scale than uh, right wing drama. But let's let's leave that there before I get sued and just describe some British drama. Oh yes, homegrown stuff. The meal deal. Oh my. Goodness. I don't know. I just thought yeah, we... you, you could have warned us before you brought up this. Let's end this off on a laugh, shall we? You see this? The pepperami is now a main. That is... Uh, get me out of this country quick. Oh, oh, sincerely. I love this guy. Dear Mr. Xi Jinping, my name is Stan. I'm seven years old. Every night, Mr. Sunak turns more sides into main meal deals. <laughs> Please send your J6 superior fighter jets and give me freedom. Nuke us already. We're done. Yeah. Genuinely broken Britain, but anyway, there we are. Um, what was the point in any of that? Uh, just to say that uh, drama is kind of dumb, and if you can be avoided, do it, especially if it's for pointless fights that no one gains out of. Love of Christ. Right here, let us carry on. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium contents on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this episode on 21st Century Etiquette. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye. Mm-hmm.